Hey everyone, welcome back to another Mattel Hammond Collection Review. Today we're going to take a look at the San Diego Comic-Con Outhouse Chaos set. Now this San Diego Comic-Con set was very, very sought after when it went up for a pre-order. It sold out in minutes and a lot of collectors did not get their hands on it. Unfortunately, I was one of the many people that missed out on the pre-order. So unfortunately, I had to go the scalper route for this. I had to go to eBay swallow my pride and hit that buy it now button for the ridiculous prices that this is going for because i really really wanted this set now i'm not super upset that it sold though i saw a lot of people were you know very vocal about you know mattel didn't make enough of these i think we got spoiled over the last couple years with you know no san diego comic-con going on and the exclusive were available online they were much easier to get uh but san diego comic-con was live this year and it's always been like this you know Companies make a limited amount of these special edition exclusives, and that's what they are. They're exclusives. They're supposed to be, you know, not the easiest thing to get your hands on. So I wasn't super upset, you know, that Mattel's not going to make 30,000 of these. So, yeah, so I had to swallow my pride and, you'll know, drop a decent chunk of change on it. But uh, getting this in, uh, I don't regret it for one bit. Now, the set retailed, I think it was around $80, but yeah definitely paid a little bit uh, more than that so anyways let's take a look at the package before we take it out of its sleeve it comes in this beautiful sleeve with the Jurassic Park gates the artwork is absolutely beautiful you can even see the silhouette of a pteranodon flying overhead looking at the top of the box we got the Jurassic Park logo front and center back of the box is the exact same artwork as the front it just has a little bit of information you'll visit jurassicworld.com blah 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 side of the box you can see the t-rex and Gennaro. and the other side is just some uh, palm trees and stuff so let's get this thing out of the sleeve and take a look at the goodness inside and oh my goodness with the sleeve removed this is an absolutely drop dead gorgeous looking set just love all the attention that went into the box for this you got the t-rex front and center Gennaro on the outhouse toilet you got the Jurassic park logo over here uh all the ferns from uh the t-rex paddock you can see uh the collapsed outhouse down here just all around just an absolute gorgeous gorgeous looking box and let's just take a quick look at the top that same Jurassic Park logo is also on the top of the box and let's spin around and take a look at the back we got the T-Rex paddock all along the back of the box during the original trial run of Jurassic Park. Donald Gennaro ends up courting disaster when he frantically flees from his vehicle in hopes of hiding from the Tyrannosaurus Rex. However, he learns the true meaning of when nature calls during this bathroom breakdown where his objection is clearly overruled. I just love the clever word that Mattel has been putting on the Hammer Collection boxes. Always, always a fun little read. So yeah, let's just pop the camera off this tripod and take a closer look at this set to see the Rex is proudly displayed at the center of the box here is Gennaro looking very surprised on that outhouse toilet in the back over here we have the T-Rex paddock sign and you can see some cardboard cutouts of uh, ferns and then same thing in the background this set is really really cool uh, and let's just turn it to the side right here there's a little hole for the button that activates the electronic sounds and let's see how this looks very very cool you know what? i'm gonna shut the lights off in the studio and do this again with the lights off to get a better effect for this ah. very very cool what an awesome set the the light uh electronics i think it really stand out when uh the set is in the dark absolutely brilliant now this is such a beautiful packaging a lot of collectors are going to display this probably on their shelves it's like it's it's meant to be kept in the box but on this channel we don't keep things in the box so time to very carefully unbox this and take a look at all the contents inside but before we crack this set open, 
Let's have a nice group shot of all Mattel's other San Diego Comic-Con exclusives. Yes, the Amalgam one is technically a Mattel Creations exclusive, but let's just take a look at all the brilliant packaging that they did. I will be reviewing this one very shortly on the channel. It's like the first San Diego Comic-Con exclusive, the John Hammond one, Ray Arnold, and the very sought-after Dennis Nedry in the Barbersaw can. So yeah, Mattel's been really really creative with the packaging for these sets and i absolutely love it oh uh, it's a shame i'm gonna have to crack that rex open and here is the set out of the box and you can see the rex a little bit more clearly right here uh behind janeiro is his hat and suitcase so it's nice that that is included and on the bottom right here we have the cardboard for the rest of the outhouse so i'm gonna Take all this stuff out very carefully, and then we're going to take a closer look at everything fully assembled. And let's have a nice 360 degree view of this set. What an awesome set. I love all the stuff it comes with. Gennaro is the best likeness we've seen so far in the Hammond collection. Uh, Rexy, she looks great. You know, it's just a repaint of the original Hammond collection Rex. Uh, the paint job is a lot darker. You can't really see it right now. I'm going to try to pick it up when we get the details a little bit later on in the review. There's a nice rain deco on it. It's they looks like they sprayed it with some kind of uh, watery uh, material. It leaves raindrops all over the figure. It gives it a nice tacky feel. makes it look like it's soaking wet in the rain. Uh, as for the outhouse, love the inclusion of the outhouse, but it's unfortunately made out of cardboard, which means uh, you, know, you have to be careful with it. It can wear out and get creased very, very easily. Would have loved to see them actually include a plastic collapsible outhouse but uh maybe there's something in the pipeline for the future uh who knows and i love the inclusion of the rex paddock fence we need more of stuff uh, more stuff like that included with more releases in the future love using stuff in my uh, toy photography i know a lot of people really appreciate that also being included in the set so yeah all around really really neat looking set and for some quick measurements, Gennaro is your standard three and three quarter inch figure or nine and a half centimeters. So he's 118 scale. As for Rexy, she is 25 inches long from the tip of the tail to the tip of the snout or 63 and a half centimeters and about eight inches tall to the top of the head or 19 centimeters. The height will change depending on how you have the figure positioned. So Rexy in the movies is just over 40 feet long. So with those measurements and put this figure in the 120 scale range. And now let's first take a closer look at Donald Gennaro. What a great figure. Like I said earlier, the best likeness we've seen so far in the Hammond collection. Let's pop his hat off so the studio lights uh, can illuminate his head a little bit more. That is a perfect likeness to Martin uh, Ferraro, who played Donald Gennaro in the movies. Just an absolute great figure. Let's take his little briefcase out of his hand and bring him in closer. Take a look at that great head skull. Very very well done. The hair is nicely sculpted. It's done in a gray color. The shirt has some nice pinstripes on it. Tie is very well done and painted. His belt is painted brown with a little bit of gold trim. There's something hanging off his pocket and the sculpt continues down uh, to his leg. I don't know what that is. If you know, just uh, let me know in the comments. The shorts are done in nice gray, nice folds and wrinkles. The shoes, slip on shoes are done in brown. So all around very well done figure i have to say it probably the best uh figure so far uh human figure so far in the hammond collection just absolutely love the head sculpt looks just like him let's take a look at it from the side now for articulation his head can move side to the side it is on a ball joint so you can look up a little bit and down a little bit arm can move up rotate 360 degrees 90 degrees at the elbow the wrist can move up and down and you get 360 degree movement on that wrist joint now for the waist i don't like the waist articulation on the hammond collection figures i just i miss the traditional swivel waist we saw on the uh legacy figures uh it's more of an ab crunt than a waist swizzle, swivel it's just a lot you feel like you're you're really forcing it just the way it's sculpted it pushes up against the size you can't get really too much turn you feel like you're gonna break your figure but you do get a decent ab crunch that goes backwards and forwards uh get a nice split at the legs for that legs can kick out that far and for that knee articulation absolutely love the knee joints on this figure and on ellie Sattler. i feel like they're really really gummy on uh alan grant but they're much better plastic used on him and for the feet you can get some forward rotation 
and a little bit of backwards rotation and you do get a nice pivot on that ankle and yeah just be careful with these joints you can see a little crack form right here the same thing happened to my ellie figure uh on her elbow joints just be really careful posing these figures but yeah all around this guy looks absolutely great and you do get his little hat nicely done he got a little black band around it. it's cast in white and it does fit nicely on his head let's get the camera to focus in on that first it makes you wonder why they didn't do this with the uh, hammock collection grant figures that you know, they just gave us a uh, hatless head they definitely can pull it off i wonder if we'll see that when they eventually get to a hammock collection uh john hammond figure if he'll come with a removable hat and then here is Gennaro's briefcase cast in black plastic has some nice texture and details on it you see the buckles and all the stitching all around this so yes another neat accessory but complete his look and now for the outhouse I said earlier, the outhouse is made out of cardboard, which is kind of a shame, you know, for the few of us that are going to take this thing out of the package. And I wish it was just made out of a uh, more durable material. It is nice cardboard, you know, nice smooth finish. You can see all the bamboo printed on all sides of it. You get some ferns uh, also printed along the side. The top does come pre-assembled in the package. And as I accidentally activate uh, the sounds on it, um, bleh, let's wait for this to pass for a second okay there we go um this does come pre-assembled in a couple tabs you just pop it on the top uh i guess you can pop it off to recreate it get in uh demolish but you know those are cardboard tabs and they're probably gonna wear out uh over time the door same thing you have to you know crease the door to get it to open and i can just see that wearing out so i'm not even gonna bother uh folding that hinge on mine and then popping it off you can see the porcelain throne itself you get this other cardboard insert that represents the demolished outhouse. This is also removable. And you can see there's a couple pegs to put Gennaro's feet or any other character you want to put on the toilet. Because sometimes when you got to go, you got to go. And then pushing the button, we'll do it one more time. get a couple different sound bites of Rexy's roar and this light up uh, lightning feature. Now I wish it actually included Gennaro sound bites like what's the matter kid never had lamb chops. Maybe it's the power going back on and him just screaming no before the Rex uh, devours him. So that is a little bit of a missed opportunity. And you can see those pegs right here. And let's just pop Gennaro on those pegs. You can have them displayed on those and just, just get them to sit on the toilet it'd probably help for us if i actually bent his legs before i put him on those pegs and that will keep him nice and secure why he does his business so yeah really really digging the toilet i wonder if we'll ever see this accessory again in the future uh i mean probably not because usually when they do these comic con sets usually one the exclusive accessories don't make an appearance but i would love to see a fully collapsible plastic outer house sometime in the line because this cardboard is just not going to hold up over time and the last accessory is the T-Rex paddock sign, which is really nicely done. Uh, I don't know if this is like paint smudges or if those white plastic mixed in with the gray, but it is kind of a little bit off-putting. You know, it breaks up all that uh, nice solid gray look. Is yeah, it is definitely plastic swirls. I guess they didn't mix the gray uh, correctly when they were molding this. Oh, well, you know, it's not like it's a premium set that we can never, ever get replacements for. Uh, you do have some decals, no feeding, flash photography, yelling, you get the T-Rex paddock sign. You got the camera symbol up here. The back of it is hollow, so it's the underneath. Really not a big deal, but a nice little touch that they include, included this. And I'd love to see the other dinosaur paddock signs make appearances in future sets. And one thing I wanted to talk about that I almost forgot is the included uh, backdrop that comes with this set. So let's move the figures off here. Unfortunately, the plastic that holds uh, the Rexy in, you have to cut it to get it out so you can see the ring around here. I wish it was just like maybe put some tabs in there so we can remove it. I love, love saving these backdrops, but it's really well done. You can see the uh, paddock fence in the background. Let me just move my studio lights up a little bit so you can get less of that glare. You can see the 10,000 volt. Uh, fences all messed up now here you go all the debris and rubble of the destroyed outhouse let's get Gennaro out of here you do have this pop-up of ferns and reeds you got some bells back there I don't even know what that is from the movie I mean that's just another part of the outhouse but yeah really really cool black uh backdrop you even got some rain 
for the top. So definitely fun if you're into photography. Now moving on to the big girl herself. This is the new Rexy that comes in this set. It's just a straight up repaint of the original Hammer Collection one, except in this much, much darker color scheme, I have to say. Uh, it looks much better in hand. Uh, the promotional images for this made this figure look absolutely terrible. The white looked uh, too bright and like applied sloppily. Whoever took the promotional images uh, should be fired. But uh, yeah, much, much better in hand. You can see on the head right here, all her bony crest has a nice dry brush over it. Nice fine scale, scale details all over the head. This is a beautiful figure. I, I hyped up the uh, original one in my release and this one is just as great. Uh, you know, same complaints, you know, glass eye, yes, it kind of gives it that premium look, but it's just not executed right. It just looks dead from almost every angle. Thankfully, there's some creative people in the Jurassic community that are selling eye replacements. You just have to disassemble the head, and it looks much, much better. Eventually, I have to get one of those uh, teeth are painted in an off-yellow color and then open it up the mouth. Here's the other problem I have with this figure. I don't like the ratcheted mouth on here. It just really limits... Uh, the poses you can get it in. You just limit it to like the two open positions. Now the gum tissue on this one is darker and it actually has like a wash over to bring out all the details. So I'm gonna bring out the other Hammond Collection Rex and put them side by side so you can see the difference. And here they are side by side. This one is a much brighter pink. This one's a little bit darker. I'm just not knock them over. Um, you can see the wash on here it does bring out the details a little bit better than it does on this one. And since we got our mouth open, you do get this nice poseable rubber tongue. You can put in a couple different positions. There's plastic on the lower jaw. It has done a nice glossy color. Same thing for the roof of the mouth. Nice and glossy. Some nice details in there. And then along the side of the head, you do get all that light uh, white paint that they used uh, on a majority of the underside of this figure. I guess to give it that nighttime look. And I can see as I move the figure slightly, see all those little specks glistening. That is the rain deco. And it looks much better in person than it does on camera let's get the camera focusing on that just a little bit uh it's really cool effect and i really really like it. it's all over the body all the way down to the tip of the tail and then turn the figure over you can see all that white they use for the underside i do have a paint blemish right here it's this is the the rubber neck cover and at this thing just it's just rubbing up against this part right here not a big deal even the underside of the feet they just loved love using this white coloration uh, on this figure they must have bought a lot of it for a good price so they had to find a reason to use it and you can see along her back she has the same exact striping pattern as the uh, original Hammond collection uh, Rex it goes all the way down to the tip of the tail as I'm moving the light you can see all that rain deco uh, glistening uh, you do have some bright white on the back of the thighs that's probably the most off-putting uh, paint app on this figure just a little too much it went a little heavy on it but it's really not that big of a deal uh the other thing is this figure does come with the giant giant oversized feet same thing Jurassic community they're very very creative people uh there's plenty of, of people producing uh feet replacements that are much more proportionate and the figure can stand so this proves that these oversized feet were completely unnecessary and let's just go over articulation really quick on Rexy like I said, you got that hinge jaw, which I'm just not a fan of. The tongue can move up and down. Uh, this joint right here, you get some upwards, downwards movement, and some side to side. This other neck joint, upward and downward movement, and use them in tandem. You get some nice side to side movement. Uh, for the mid torso articulation, this one is really good. I gotta say, the joints on this figure are much better than the main release hammock collection one. My main one, the legs were a little bit loose. This joint was horribly loose. It was just the weight, front weight of the figure will just bring it down. But I think the rain deco just adds, like I said, it's a, kind of like a rubbery material, adds just enough friction to keep this joint in place. So I guess that uh, works out pretty well. And then going down to the arms, we move forwards and backwards. There's a hinge, allows you to swing them out, get a nice bend at the elbow, wrist can move up and down and rotate 360 degrees going down to the legs you do get a nice hip pivot and then for the knee articulation you can get some pretty good range of movement on that double jointed knee get some movement at the ankle and rotation same thing at the feet rotation pivot and the feet can move on that other joint going down to the tail up down side to side movement another joint right here up side to side up and down and this part of the tail is made out of flexible rubber material with a wire in it so you can get some nice bends on that tail so yeah hammer collection racks 
definitely the most poseable figure in the line so far. And let's just do a couple comparisons with some of the mainline figures here. This we recently reviewed Extreme Jam is uh, Geno Dectes and or Genio Dectes. I always mispronounce. I don't know what's wrong with me. And next up is Extreme Damage Blue. And I, you know, gonna say it. I'm so happy that we have not seen Blue or any of the Raptor Squad uh, yet in Hammond Collection. Uh, you know, it's I'm still watching the taste of just how poorly the Amber Collection. Uh, was done by Mattel. Uh, I think they might know that. And that's probably why they kind of held off on uh, releasing Blue and a bunch of Raptors. Yes, we're getting two more Raptors, but they're Raptors that people really been wanting, the male and female uh, Raptors from Jurassic Park 3. So please, Mattel, take your sweet time get to the Raptor squad because I really don't care. Um, <laughs> next up is the Massive Action Impelosaurus. And I wonder if we're ever going to get uh, Hammond Collection Sauropods. The, you know, the mainline Sauropods are excellent figures. Uh, you know, they have just enough articulations to get some decent poses out of them. But I wonder if we're ever going to see a true Hammond Collection Sauropod in the future. I think that would be pretty cool. You know, especially since this Rex turned out to be about 50 bucks. I could see, you know, the Hammond Collection ones. They can even go back and just retool like the Brachiosaurus and a Padasaurus. Just had a couple more joints and just use the body. I think it'll just work out fine. Uh, and lastly, here is the Roar Attack Scorpio Venator. And here are both Hammond Collection Rexes side by side. Uh, I like them both. I really have a tough uh, time deciding which one I like better. Um, you know, if I had to flip a coin and only end up with one, I, I, I'd be happy with either one of these. I, I really can't pick a favorite. A lot of people still like the original uh, color scheme. I see a few people do appreciate this uh, darker tone. But yeah, it's a great figure and both paint apps are really, really well done on it. And lastly, let's end on a nice group shot of all the current Hammond Collection figures. And these look absolutely fantastic next to each other. The line is everything the Amber Collection should have been. But I'm so happy they went with the 118 scale route. There's more you can do with it. They, they can go with all the vehicles that are currently in the line. They can mix in with the main line. So yeah, I'm really, really enjoying everything Mattel is doing with the Hammond Collection. Hopefully we see more larger dinosaurs in the near future like the Spinosaurus, Indominus Rex. And the Giganotosaurus, really hoping for a Hammond Collection Jiga because I hate the mainline one. I refuse to pick it up unless it's going to be like $10 on clearance. It's the only way you're going to see that thing reviewed on this channel. And another thing uh, worth mentioning, I hope they add another price point. We need slightly larger uh, dinosaurs than the $20 price point, maybe something around the $30 range so we can get Stegosaurus and some other species in here. But I'm sure Mattel has... Plenty of surprises in store for us. So final thoughts on this set. Mattel has been great with their San Diego Comic-Con exclusive. The packaging are always very well thought out and clever. Uh, this is a great set. You know, we finally have a Gennaro figure. Uh, he has the best likeness of any Hammond Collection release so far. You know, it's always nice to see the Hammond Collection Rex making an appearance again. It's, it's the best toy Mattel has produced so far. I like the darker color scheme on it and that rain deco. Like even though it doesn't show up great in the video, is really, really cool in person. It gives it like a nice uh, raindrop wet look. And the outhouse is cool. Love the sound effects and the lightning effect. Just wish it wasn't made out of cardboard. Just wish it was plastic and collapsible. Just go the extra mile. You know, you're charging a premium price on this. But, you know, like I said, maybe we'll see like something like that further on down the line. And same thing with Gennaro, you know, Mattel is releasing a Hammond Collection Rayano. He was last year's exclusive, so I'm sure it's just a matter of time. Probably be like a year before we see him uh, in the Hammond Collection because I know a lot of people want to add this to the collection. This set sold out incredibly fast. That's why I paid the uh, <coughs> scalper prices. But yeah, awesome set. If you have one, you're lucky, and I really hope you uh, appreciate it. So that will do it for the review. I got to get to the uh, Chaos Effect uh, Hammond Collection Ian Malcolm figure. Uh, my Dread Notice from Target should be here probably sometime today, so I'm going to do those reviews a little bit later on this week, so stay tuned for those. And as always, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, show your support by hitting that subscription button just below the video. Each subscription helps out the channel tremendously and is greatly appreciated. And I'll see you guys for the next one.